And welcome to episode 42 of Ripping the Rack Podcast. I am your co-host, Tim. With me today, as normal, is my co-host, Brian. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Sorry. What's up, Tim? I got, I got Luna, like... Oh, it's our, it's our podcasting producing pussy, Luna. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I had Luna doing Luna things. She was, she was producing. She was touching up your makeup, Timothy. Yes, yes. They yeah. just at the wrong time. At the wrong time. Mm-hmm. So what's that? So oh, I uh, I bowled this uh, this past weekend in a uh, nine pin nine pin tournament. Uh, a nine pin a ca- so quick funny story was I thought it was a three thirty cap, which it was. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. I thought it was just a three thirty cap tournament. I didn't know it was a nine pin until we started, and the first guy gets up and like. Makes a shot for the spare and, and leaves one standing and presses a button. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and they're like, spare. I'm like, that's what? And I turn around and go, is this a nine pin tournament? And they just, everyone just busted out laughing. And they're like, yeah. I was like, I had no fucking idea that it was a nine pin tournament. Like, I literally had no idea. That's funny. So, um, so I bowled, uh, I bowled with uh, Natty uh, McBride and Mike Lindsay uh, up in Bangor, and uh, we did not do well as a team. Okay. Um, I, I mean, first string. I don't, I don't remember the first string at all because I, I warmed up great. I warmed up spare strike, strike spare, spare. I like just. Pins are flying. I'm just like, okay, this sucks because I'm warming up great. I know what comes next. Yeah, 48 half and a nine pin. End up with like a 130. Okay, I bailed out. Okay, all right. And then I went like 150, 160, 160, 170, 160. So you're clipping, all right. I'm pulling great, throwing a good ball, and then I threw a 97 string with a two box. (laughs) And Not only was it a two box, but it was a 37 back half of a nine pin tournament. That is that that that's good. Dude, you almost have to try to do that. And then I followed that up with, with a, a one one fifty something, and I finished uh, with a one sixty something. So oh, so you threw that shitty game right at the great time right there in the last few strings. So mm-hmm. that was good. Good on you for doing that. Good on good on me. That was fun. Yep. Good. I made my good less time. than triumphant return. To bowling this week, you did. I was gonna, I was gonna ask your thoughts to give us your thoughts on coming. Wednesday back from was great. Wednesday yeah. was good. I was glad to be back. Went three forty. Was very yeah. happy. Thursday, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they put the bowling alley on expert level while I was away for the night, or if Jason was upset that he couldn't bowl and decided to take it out on us. But I would have had more fun. Um. Yeah, I would have had more fun probably fornicating with a cactus. Uh, stop, because you had fun because you bowled with me. That was about 5% fun. Uh, 95% fornicating the cactus. Uh, okay. Uh, sideways? No, with a smile on my face. I'll give you that. Okay. I was very impressed that you held your temper for about five boxes. Yeah, yep. I knew what type of night it was going to be right off the bat. I I uh, I, I I will say I I laughed in inwardly. I didn't uh-huh. laugh at you. It was inwardly that um, I'm like the dude hasn't thrown a ball in three and a half months uh, since the beginning of no. Actually, was it the beginning or middle of November? No, it was middle of November because mm-hmm. it was right before Thanksgiving. And I'm like, and here he is, five boxes in, and he's slamming the balls, and he's uh, saying bad words really loud. I, I, I'm a competitor, Tim. I hold myself to a high standard. <laughs> I laugh. I'm sorry. I I, 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 I hold myself to a high standard. So do you want to do you want to tell our listeners what you bowled on Thursday night? I think it was 276. Yeah, you broke two, you broke 270. I was very proud I of did. you. I did. I yeah. did. It was very yeah. tough though. You have to admit that was it was not fun. Um I once again, I think I had 35 splits and 30 boxes 
even my strikes, even my two strikes that I had were split. Felt like they were because the last two pins to fall were like split. Yeah, it and they just, just happened to get swept. Oh my god, it was it was. It, it, it's tough. tough. It's tough at Oakland Park right now. It can be. It can be. Um, mm-hmm. I hope people understand that when they're coming here in two weeks for the uh, for the five sixty tournament mm-hmm. that that Jason's hosting. I, I hope they understand that uh, this is not uh, Newport. Um, mm-hmm. This is not a juiced up Bangor or a juiced up Stars and Strike. Not that that not that these places are juiced, but just sometimes they do go pretty good in these houses. And sometimes uh, they they go good at Oakland, but yeah, it it depends. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, good times. Uh, I'd yeah. like to I'd like to congratulate Paul Dyer. Uh, Paul beat me in one string today, uh, and he was very proud about it. Did post it on Facebook that he beat Tim Matero. Um, I, you know, I I believe that confirms the theory that even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Well, I have beat you. So we do know it's possible anything can happen. I have tried to tell people time and time again that anybody can be anybody in one string. The true test comes over the course of time. Meaning, if it's a 10-string tournament, can you beat me over 10 strings? No. <laughs> that's no. The, that's, well, no, I, you could. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that that you would have to bowl out of your ass and I would have to bowl really bad. Um, I'm not going to say it. Right. I'll right. infer it, but I'm not well, going to well, say here's it. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. It would not be enjoyable to beat you as it stands right now because I would have to bowl beside you while you were having this temper <laughs> tantrum that you would be having if I was beating you at this point. Oh, uh, God. I haven't had a temper tantrum in a long time. I haven't. That's I, true. I, I haven't kicked the ball return. I haven't. I, I believe they call this growing up. I believe. Uh, maturing. Yes. Maturing. Mm-hmm. You're uh, gaining wisdom. So we do not have a guest this week, as you can see. Unfortunately, um, the couple of people that uh, schedules have, didn't line up. No, no. It's you know it's it's tough sometimes trying to get. But it, it's tough days. to get people to to get people like. You know, my, my age to your age, because kids, sports, weekends, work, yep. you know, we all have lives, you know. Yep. So it's, yeah, so we do have some lined up that are going to be on. It's just a matter of really getting, getting scheduled down. Um, and I, I believe some of these will probably have to tape much earlier, you know, maybe in the middle of yep. a week, hold on to them and then play them. You know, yeah, something like that. Um, we'll have to get a few in the can, as yeah. they say. Ah, look at you throwing out some terminology. The jargon. I, look at me. I'm a podcaster now. I'm a podcaster. Uh, very rudimentary podcasters we are, uh, but that's okay. We're amateurs. That's right. That's right. We, we don't are. get paid, folks. We do not get paid for this. If if some benevolent sponsor, big word, thank you. Yeah, yeah there if you go. Some benevolent person would like to sponsor us. We are available. We'll do we'll do bar mitzvahs, bar, weddings, yep. weddings, um, bar mitzvahs. Uh, yeah, uh, what else? Quinceañeras. Quince- oh, yeah, yeah, quinceañera. We'll, we'll do those. Yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, granted, it will be podcast. No music will be playing. But you'll Tim have to will sing. Us. Tim will sing for you, and I'm going to play the drums. Um. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're going to rock the shit out of those drums. I sure am. Yeah, you're going to be Dale and I'm going to be Brennan. That's right. Yeah. You know, no, well, you know what? You could hire us for your company outings. We'll come and we'll, we'll motivate your employees. We'll do some motivational speaking you know, on, on your behalf. I have always, always wanted to be a motivational speaker. Oh, my God. I can see the infomercial. It writes itself. Look, only because two reasons. Number one, I've always wanted to do stand up. I have. I I I love comedy. I I like to think at times I'm kind of. I don't think inspirational speaking should be compared with stand up. That's your first problem. Why this is a bad idea. I want to. I I think. You know what? I I can move people to emotions. 
I do it every day. I anger, frustration. frustration. <laughs> um, I do make my wife laugh occasionally. You drive in people to tears, Tim. In frustration, um, <laughs> I think motivational Tim should come out. I, I blow my wife my wife's mind all the time because sometimes she says I can't believe you are that, and you know sometimes it's it's good words sometimes it's kind or thoughtful and then sometimes it's stupid and you know things like that. But uh, you know you and I you and I need to do a motivational speech. We do here. I've got an idea. We go to the local high school. For those of you who don't know, Brian and I live on the mid coast of Maine in the Rockland area. The local high school is Thanks, Tim. High school. Now people are going to come try and kill us. No, they're going to come try to find us. They're going to. They are yeah, going to kill to, us. Oh no, no, they're going to want our autograph. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, folks, for those of you, okay, I'm going to wind up in a well with a guy with a dog looking at me. Saying, "You look pretty there, kid." No, it puts the lotion on its skin, <laughs> or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> anyway. What we should do is we should take our services to the high school, Oceanside High School, and say... And motivate these young minds. We would like to put on a motivational session for the kids. We should tape it. So then we have a resume behind it, and we can go to all the other schools. Next thing you know, we're fucking huge. We're rocking it. We're making thousands of dollars. We're That's us. Right. Right. Yeah. And before you know it, we're responsible for the DGENs that run the country. <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's on them. But you <laughs> can do, you folks, you can do whatever you think, whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. It can be done. Hey, listen, after we really prove that anybody can be president, it doesn't make it a good idea. So let's not tell people that anybody can be president anymore. <laughs> you know what? You could be president. I don't want to be president. Kelly tried to tell me. Kelly tried I, to tell me that I should run for city council, and I'm like, that. No, they will never let me on city I, council. I should run for president. Would you I, vote for me for city council? Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! You're get, you're getting at least four votes, five votes. At I least you're at least five votes. You're getting mine. You're getting Angie's. You're getting Kelly's. You're getting yours. <laughs> you're getting your father's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on Kelly's vote. I'd have to win that one. Okay, you're getting four votes. Four. No, at least five. four. Oh. You're at least six, because Dale, Dale. Oh yeah, and Nicole and he. Dale. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So yep. I, I think I could do that. I think I'm going to run okay. for. I think I'm going to run for city council. You should. You should run for city council. Run on the common sense platform. No, I'm going to run on the if you are a nonprofit business, prepare to be taxed platform. Again, the common sense platform. <laughs> oh my god, that was, you ought to see my friggin' setup here. My my mic stand broke. I've got my microphone in a pen holder. Ah, uh, you can see this. this is, you want to talk about? Can you? Can you look at that? <laughs> oh, get on to. All right, do we have any questions, Tim, from from our listeners? Since we've we now gone down a rabbit hole for 10 minutes and annoyed everyone. Oh, my God. Habs suck. Sorry, Angela. Habs oh, suck. God. I haven't said that for a few weeks. Yeah, you've been getting off easy, Angela. Yeah, Habs suck. Uh, Leafs suck. For all my Leafs fans. You know? Toronto Maple Leafs? No, they suck. Yeah. No, you, you know, I, I was going to go with another, but... I, I'm not going to kick the Senators while they're down. They they know they're bad. So Oh, yeah. uh, wait. Are they still in the NHL? They, they, they're they not playing really. They're, I, I think they'll struggle to win 15 games this year. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll be bad. Yeah. So, okay, yes, so. We, we, so, a couple of questions. Okay. And I, I suspect this is going – these two questions, two or three questions, are going to take up most of our time because you and I will probably have – a pretty good conversation about this because we're long-winded and we like to talk well we all know tim likes to talk mm. sorry all again right. the motivational side of tim that comes out right you can Motiv- do it, man motivational right. timmy my uh my screen is very bright which is 
making it very makes me appear like I'm very pale. Which you are, anyways. I am. Okay. Uh, and yes, I will say, Calvin, we enjoy coming to Canada to see you. I said it. It mm-hmm. is on tape. It is on record. I will never speak of this again. That is true. So anyway. I miss Calvin. There we go. All right, there it's we out go. now. There we okay, go. so the first question. Uh, they would like to know, what is your favorite type of tournament? And then they, they ask, like, how do you handle it? And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extrapolate from that and really go with, like, how do you, do you prepare differently or do you do something differently for different types of tournaments type thing? Hmm. So I'm going to start with you, Bri. What's your... My favorite type of tournament is a team's tournament. I like a team marathon tournament. One string or two string matches, even three string matches. I love the 560. It doesn't necessarily have to be capped. I just like a good team marathon tournament. I think those are the most fun. You know, it's it's fun to bowl with people you don't necessarily get to bowl with all the time. And that way you can get to bowl with a bunch of people and see a bunch of people that you don't, instead of just singles tournaments or doubles tournaments. Like, I know Canada has a lot of team tournaments. We don't have that many team tournaments down here. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, how do I handle it? I don't know. I, I guess it depends on how big a landscape of a tournament is. If it's like just... You know, if it's uh, once a year, like the Hobbs or the Derby or something like that, you know, you the, the probably the league couple league nights before the tournament, I'll try a little, you know, concentrate a little more, take a little more time, play shots how I think I'd play them there. You know, not I don't want to say try harder because I'm always trying, but you know, focus more. There we go. Focus, then your son. Yeah, focus. and if it's the worlds, it's I handle it with all right. I'm going in. About a month and a half before most Saturdays and throwing five to eight to ten, you know? <laughs> so I I took this type of question kind of a little bit different, meaning I, I'm not putting the worlds in here just because I, I think everybody knows the worlds. That's, that's a lot of people's it, favorite tournament. It, it's it's the best tournament out there. You know, it's it's the most prestigious one we have. It's the it's certainly the longest for the one. men's side. On the men's I'm side, I'm sorry. Yes, on the men's side. My apologies to the women that listen to this show. So there are uh, many different types of tournaments, and it really all depends on kind of my mood on which one I like at that time. If that makes sense, like I I I enjoy a best box. A simple best yeah. box tournament mm-hmm. because it's fun. You know, a 10-string tournament, we're done in three hours, typically, in the best box. Yeah. Um, it's a good time. It's just, again, to me, it's it's more fun. Um, I am a bigger fan of, like you said, the team-type tournaments. Um, and I'm not talking like the, the main state opens where it's you both fight no, yeah. and you go home. Like a marathon, yeah. I'm talking, yeah, like a marathon type thing where it's one, two, or three string matches, whatever it is. Uh, like the Derby or the Hobbs or mm-hmm. like the 560 in Moncton or anything like that. I have the a Dave lot. Dave Stewart. The Dave Stewart. To me, those are. Those are the best types of tournaments just because there's a number of factors. Number one, the bowling. Uh, number two, it's the camaraderie. It's the friendships. It's the shooting the shit with people. It's, you know, it's people giving you shit. You giving, you know what I mean? It's just, it, there's a lot of fun involved with some competition. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I handle it? I, I'm going to, I'm going to take that to being, if I'm bowling like today, was a 330 cap nine pin marathon type tournament. Obviously, I'm playing shots differently than I would in a regular tournament. Oh, of course, of course, yeah. Because I'm not trying necessarily to make the shot. I'm just trying to get nine. Nine. Which is kind of fun when you're sitting on a 
you know, like a three and one or, you know, like a three and one or something like that. And I don't have to try to cut it over. I can just play the three. To me, it, it obviously it makes that shot much, much easier because I don't have to be as exact. Eight pin drops. I don't give a shit if I chop one. I'm just right. trying to hit one. Hell, I'm happy uh, when I get eight pin drops. I know I'm getting a spare. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll go crazy. Well, I, come on now. But I have seen you eight pin drop. You do chop more. So, mm-hmm. uh, so for me, it's it's. I think my favorite type would be that team marathon type tournament. Um, I'm not as big of a fan of a five sixty as I am. If it was, if it was just, I'm not a big fan of handicap tournaments. But if you're going to do a team marathon, and it's not going to be scratch. Then I'd rather just do a handicap versus a five sixty. Yeah, yeah I don't want it. I don't want. Like, I would rather have it capped or handicapped. Well, that's not the both. No, no, no. It's not. Like I'd rather have it. The average cap is five sixty. Yeah. And it's scratch bowling. Well, yes. Or it's not capped and it's handicapped. Correct. I, I mean, to me personally, I'd rather have, if it's not a scratch tournament, meaning no 560, no handicap, nothing. It's right. just, it, you know, take your five best bowlers and you go with, that's who you go with. Um, then I would rather do handicapped than, than capped. Yeah. And I'll give you the example. The example that I would use is, and I can't remember if it was the Derby or the Hobbs a few years ago. Um, it was Evan, myself, Mark Carrier, Jeff LaPierre, and Chris Merrill, I think. Chris Merrill, the five of us in a mm-hmm. handicap tournament. Like, we were giving people 150 to 200 pins to string, but we had a blast. Like, it was fun. Yeah. You know, with a 560, the five of us aren't going to be able to bowl together. Right. Which, again, is okay. I think the 560 brings more bowlers in. You know, like, people people made some comments, like, I can't believe they let five of you guys bowl together. It's like, I, I don't know what you want to say. It's like, we're bowling six, it's like we're bowling yeah. six people. Like, you're getting 200. Yeah. Like, we if have you can't to win up. with a 200-pin head start, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's... The, and, again... The how do I handle it part is is I, I'm not quite sure how to answer that. Other than depends on the tournament on how I play shots depends on yeah you know like with the best box uh, for example you and I have bowled a couple of best boxes together if I'm on the right and you're on the left then I'm I'm going first yeah if I punch odds are is you're probably going to take a, a tiny second and just focus just a little more yeah vice make versa, sure I admit, yeah yeah vice versa if, I, if you're on the right and i'm on the left i'm seeing what you have if you have a nine pin drop with wood then i'm trying to throw a strike right you know because yeah. odds are you're going to make that yeah, and that's the same thing with me on the left. If I know you have a break that you're going to make, I'm throwing it harder and hit the head pin to try and throw a strike. Right. Because if I punch, oh, well, you're going to make that. Right. I'm not trying, you know, you put me in a tournament, a uh, pro tour, pro series, singles, doubles, whatever. I'm not trying to throw strikes. I'm unless trying to get I, breaks. Unless I absolutely 100% need it. Last box, down, whatever, and I've got to throw a double. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. trying to throw a strike. Rest of it, of you're just trying to get breaks. Right. Because the break doesn't do me any good at that point because I need a strike. Mm-hmm. So, uh, next question. So, we, we had the conversation uh, about our Canadian friends with one box. Ah, yes, the one box question from last week. The one million dollars you got a million freaking dollars on the line a lot of money and it's a lot of money 
Adamani, you need to mark with, and what do we say, six to tie, seven to win? I think I that's what we so. said. Okay. Yep. Uh, kind of tough to do that just for the United States. So let's make it you even tough. Let's go by state. Okay. Okay. All right. And where are we starting? Uh, let's start. Uh, let's start in Massachusetts. Okay. And we'll go current. We'll start with current. This is. This is. Uh, we'll go. We'll go. Uh, do we want to do male and female, or do we want to do anyone? I don't think we. I don't think we. Did we even mention that with the Canada side, or did we just I, go I, male? I can't remember. I can't. I can't remember. I don't, what do you want to do? We'll, we'll figure it we'll out. We'll do mail. We'll, we'll start okay. with mail, and then we'll, okay. if, if, if we think we can. Okay. So we got mass, and I'm going to write these down. Oh, okay. All right. Mass. Mass not, enough, not enough that they're recorded in, in nope. MP4 format. No, I want to okay. write it down. It makes me feel better. Okay. So, mass current. Current bowler. You need a mark in the last box to win the match. Million dollars. Six on it. Seven to, seven, six to tie. Seven to win. Surratt. I'm going Baker. Okay. And yes, Jeff Surratt. I went against you. Both only because, good picks. Only because I've seen you bowl in the finals of the world. <laughs> Sorry. I had to do it. <laughs> he gives me shit. I'm giving him shit. Um, all time. All time mass bowler. Oh, Ol- Olsta. You can't choose Olsta. You never saw him bowl. I, I can't ju- I can't choose like Cy Young as the greatest pitcher of all time. Yeah, I can. Like, I, I wouldn't choose Cy Young as the greatest pitcher of all time. He had the most losses of all time. Okay, Brett Favre has the most picks of all time. And that's why he's not the best of all time. He's a gunslinger. Uh, I would. Uh, I would. I yes. I would take Tommy Olsa. Olsa would be. I mean, look. All you have to do is go on YouTube and watch the Channel Five replay. Of the match with Craig Holbrook to see what he does in the final. The triple strike. This is, this is the week after he threw the four bagger. Yeah. So he was uh, good, folks. He was he was really good. He was really really good. Um, New Hampshire. Current. Current. John Winchell. Damn. That was my pick. Damn you, Scoop Steve. Um, I was, I'm, I'm, I was torn between Winchell and Beauvair. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am going to take Johnny Winchell. Um, I think he is arguably one of the most underrated anchor bowlers out there right now. I, I, I think Johnny is a tremendous anchor bowler. Oh yes. Um, very composed at all times when he's on the lane. Yep. I just, I just think even when he's struggling, you come down to that last box and you need a mark. I would put Johnny up there ten out of ten times. Mm-hmm. And to me, who's seen a lot of bowling, that that to me that's the mark of an anchor bowler that they can shut out what's happened the previous nine boxes and just focus yeah. on one, and just focus on that one box. Yep. So. I'm I'm gonna go Winchell as well from New Hampshire, uh, all time, all time New Hampshire. Ah, <sighs> hmm. This, and this one is tougher than you think. Faber, Carrington. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I and I'll tell you that there's three guys that I'm torn between. Carrington's one of them, and I know he did a lot of bowling in Massachusetts, but I, I think you know he lives a place now. I, I think mm. most people would consider him a New Hampshire bowler. Yep. Um, you know, some people consider Sarge a New Hampshire bowler because he did live in New Hampshire for a little bit. 
I do not. I consider him a mass shoot. Oh. Yeah. What about that, huh? Uh, hold on. Can we go back to Massachusetts for a quick second? You, you can if you want. I want to go back to Massachusetts for a quick second. My answer for all time. So current, my answer stands. I'm still taking Baker. Okay. In the in the last. And I think we can all agree that Sarge is, is one of the most explosive bowlers that Oh yes. That we have probably ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, I am. I'm still going to go with Tommy because I think I think Olsen did it more consistently. So we just drove all the way back to Massachusetts for nothing. Yes. But I did want to bring up. I did want to bring right. up. That, 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 that's a Tim thing. That would really happen. I did want to bring no because I would drive to Massachusetts for Nico's. Well, you drove all the way home to fi- to try and find your uh, your glasses that were in your bone bag the other night. So yeah, that makes yep. sense. Yeah, that I did. Um, all the way home, it's only two miles from the bowling alley. But anyway, um, I digress. Um, I was gonna go. I was gonna change my my goal. I was gonna change my thinking to Sarge, but then I got thinking about it, and you know, but then God, there's there's so many bowlers out of Massachusetts, like Jeff Atkins. Mm-hmm. Dick O'Connell, you know Donnie Richmond, who is a hell of a bowler. Paul Berger, Paul Berger, great bowler. Uh, you had Cookie. Uh, Cookie, you had uh, Jack Klein. Jack Klein, who's still bowling. He's still throwing a great ball. Um, there's a lot of great ball. God, damn, oh, that's a tough one. Ah, I'm staying with Olsa. Okay. Final answer. Final answer. Uh, Sarge with a close second off for for that for me. Okay, where were we? New Hampshire, all time. Yes. Okay, and you mm-hmm. went with Carrington. I did. I'm going to go with Lipke. I'm going with Timmy. Only because I just want to be different. Um, kind of tough to go against Carrington, but I'm I'm going to go with Tim. But you like to be different, so there you go. Well, I'm going with Tim because his name is Tim. Oh. Oh, well, Sorry. there you go. Sorry for that. My my mic my mic stand broke again. <laughs> the pen shifted, folks. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go with uh, I'll, I'll go with Timmy on that one. Okay. So what are we in Maine now? Uh, we are in Maine. We have traveled all the way back to Maine, and so we're gonna go current bowlers, current Maine bowlers. Go. And if you don't choose me, I am gonna come through. No, I'm just kidding. I know currently who I'm, right now. I know who I'm choosing. Chris Merrill. No, that's not who I'm choosing. That's who I picked. I picked Chris. Well, you're wrong. Okay. Why do we? Why would you not pick me? Because I picked Chris. I can't wait to see you this week. I just got a bullet ball right up your ass. <laughs> And I am not using lube this time either. This time. Really? Yeah, no, I, I pick Chris right now. Why? Right now I pick Chris. Why? I want an answer on air on why you would pick Chris over me. Because you punch a lot right now. I watch it every Thursday night. Yeah, but for a million dollars, you think I'm gonna punch? For ten thousand you threw it in the corner. <laughs> but I was up twenty. <laughs> I just need the mark. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Damn you me my, my fact. Damn me my, my logic. You want my answer? Yeah. Ask who? Me. Uh-huh. Who is it? You? Chris Merrill. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm you'd, glad be we a, agree. you'd be a fool not to take Chris right now in the state of Maine. Yeah. Okay. Um, even though I, I will tell you, um, there is, Four, maybe five people right now in the state of Maine that I would that I could comfortably have up in that situation mm-hmm. and take the money out of it for a second because let's face it, are we really going to be bowling for a million dollars? Probably not. No. So if you are, you've gotten yourself in some terrible, terrible kingpin type situation okay. where you've lost a lot of money. Yeah. So Mark Carrier, Chris Merrill. Cole Fry, myself, and probably maybe Brian Purdy. 
Scott Lapierre. I mean, Scott Lapierre again. You there are some good, really good main bowlers that mm-hmm. if you if you need a mark again, you've got to have the ability to forget the previous nine boxes. But you got to have the ability to get a break too. Yep. But I think it's the ability to forget the previous nine that's more important. Mm-hmm. Because if you can forget that nine, those whatever happened in those nine. And you won't have the great wall killing situ- situations either if you forget what happened in previous boxes. That is correct. So the great wall killer of 2019, Mr. Chris. No, tw- 2020. Oh, that was 2020. No, yeah, we, no. Yes, it was. We went right before. We went right before we did lockdown. Go, we did go last year. Did we go last year? Yeah, we, go, we went. No, we did go last year. Yes, we did. We went in no. 2020. They canceled before. it this year. We went last year. They canceled. We went right before everything got hairy and we got locked down. Didn't we really? Yes. I, that's how. That's how fucking confused I am. I don't remember. Literally, don't remember. I want to say it was 2019, but maybe it was last year. No, uh, it was last year. You're right. Damn it. Mm-hmm. Came up on my came up on my memories like last week or two. It's okay, old man. I got you. Okay. Uh, this week's podcast is brought to you by Prevagen. Prevagen. <laughs> Number one pharmacist recommended memory supplement. Oh, thanks a lot. That's now coming up on my Facebook. <laughs> it's it going to come before. up on yours, too. Probably. Uh, uh, all time, Maine. Charlie. Yeah. Char- Charlie. Um, Charlie's probably bold for 20 grand before 25. Well, here, here's the thing Charlie's <laughs> bold for big money. He's bowled in big money matches that none of us have, have ever bowled in. No. Yeah. Like like money and paper bag matches. Like <laughs> like somebody was losing a house. Like probably. dead serious. Money was in paper bags. Like, I got my money. Let's bowl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're talking thousands of dollars back then. We're not yeah. talking, you know, now if 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 you know if someone says, Hey, I'll bowl you a hundred bucks. You're like, ah, shit, ah, fuck, okay. This was 10 strings for $1,000, and there's like 10 of them. Oh, more than that. Yeah. You know, they're talking one string matches for ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Maybe even one more. String. One string. No, not one string. Ten string. You one said per- one string matches. Oh, I meant, t- I meant one, I meant person versus person. Yeah, 10 string matches, yeah. A 10 string match. Uh, 20 grand, 30 grand. That's just to me that would be fun. Like I, I'm sorry, if I had a backer, like I'm I, glad you. I, your I backer would think it's fun. I obviously can't afford it. Obviously, I am not independently wealthy. But I, I'm, I'm of that mindset. That would be, that would be awesome. That'd be so much fun. Oh yeah, it'd be fun to have big money matches like that once oh, a week. Oh yeah. Right? Oh my god. Now, of course, with with the video equipment and everything else. Oh yeah, streaming that shit, you know. Yeah, if I had the match, I'd, you know, it was like someone someone told me once. This was I don't know a year or two ago. They were like, I'd bowl you, I'd bowl you for a thousand dollars in one string, and I'm like, I'm not bowling anyone for a thousand bucks for one string because again, anything today, can happen. As yeah. today proved, anything can happen in one string. But how cool would it be to have enough disposable? Income? You don't play rock paper scissors one round. No, but how cool would that be to have that much disposable income and to have other people? We need to get that... Barstool to sponsor Candlepin Bowling matches. Oh, my God. How fun would that be? One string for like a thousand. Barstool should save a Candlepin Bowling alley with their whole small business thing. Yeah. Why don't you get a hold of them? Oh, El Presidente? Dave yeah. Portney? Yeah. Hey, yeah, let me, let me just get the bat phone here. Hey, Dave. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Really enjoy uh, your pizza reviews. Could you maybe spare a couple of grand to, you know. To send, send to a bowling alley in Maine? That would be cool. But no, I, I mean, seriously, though, how much fun would that be? It'd to, be a good time. To bowl one, yeah. like, the most I've ever bowled for a person for one string was 100 bucks. For, for one string. And the most I've done overall was like we bowled 
and I don't know, years ago, we bought 20 bucks a box one night. But knowing that, look, you're bowling 20 bucks a box, odds are, unless you really fuck up. It's going to be a wash half the time, and you're going to owe 20 or 40 bucks. Right. Maybe 60. Right. You're not going to, you're not going to be, you know, and again, unless you have it's such a bad night. Right. That, you know, you lose nine boxes, you tie one. So, okay, so I just lost 180 bucks. Right. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, the, ooh, maybe you should think next time before you do that. Maybe you work out a payment plan with the guys you're bowling. Oh, let's, let's just say I only did that once. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So I, I guess now let's, let's really make this one more real difficult before we, end the, before we end the show. All of the states combined, who do you got for one box currently? One box, you need a mark with six to six to tie, seven to win. Anyone in the United States in Candleton Bowling? Winchell. I hate you. <laughs> Winchell. So. Yeah, that's my pick, definitely. So here's my take on this. I would take Johnny. Yeah. I say I take Winchell. It's it's the right mentality. Now. Yep. Even though I'd be hard pressed to choose against Baker or Boudreaux or Insurrect. Um or Bobert. Again. And it the other part of this is it also all depends on where you're bowling. That's true. That is true. I, it, it really does. Because if I'm bowling at Lita, if this is being done at Lita Lane. Taking hey, Chris Bovair. I'm, I'm taking Jeff Surratt. Huh? Yeah, he has won the Easter there. He's won a couple of Easters. He won the Pro Series there recently, the, the playoff. After playoff. not bowling for. After not bowling for eight months. <laughs> Um, so again, it, it all depends. There's a lot of variables. If it's at Exeter, I'm taking Johnny. That's his home house. It's where he bowls out of. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm up in Augusta, I don't know. I I, I might take me. I might take Chris. I might take Johnny there because I'm sure Johnny. I don't know if John's ever bowled there or not. Um. Hell, I might take Holbrook there. I, Holbrook yeah. plays well there. Mark Ritchie uh, has a house, the house I single there. Yes, he does. He beat me. 207. It's amazing how many people have beat me for house records. Master. Morrison. Well, well Again, pull better. Sean Morrison. Yeah, State sure, yeah. State of Maine. Sean in his prime, that, the, that 10-year stretch, Sean was a great bowler mm-hmm. in that 10-year stretch. I don't care what anyone says. He was a great bowler during that. He threw some big strings. He threw some big totals. Won he a lot won, of tournaments. won some stuff. So that's you know what I I hate the question, but I love the question. Yeah, it's it's a fun one to debate because um, you didn't choose me in that that I was well, in your I, wedding. I was in I your apologize. wedding. Yeah, yeah, you were. That's true. I have babysat your kid. Yeah, and he cries and he's scared of you. Not me, Angie. Angie's right, Angie. Kid. Right. My wife yeah. has changed your kid's diaper. Yeah. And you? So do you want me to pick Angie? No, I want you to die. No. <laughs> oh. You pick whoever you want, as long as his name is Tim Acaro. Um. Yeah. So that's that's what we got for questions this week. Yeah. Um, folks, we, we do want um, more questions, more more interaction, things like that would be great. More hypothetical, um, more talking points. Send us your thoughts. Send us your grocery list. We'll talk about that. Just send oh, us hell stuff. Yeah. Send us stuff. Like we, we obviously we love to talk and we love to talk about Candleton bowling and and 
on Fridays. People, don't forget Friday mornings. That is general talk with Brian and Tim, meaning we will talk about anything other than candlepin bowling. That's right. Maybe maybe when all this corona stuff's over on Friday, we'll do a cooking episode. Tim and I will cook on camera. Brian will cook on camera. Tim will help me. <laughs> we'll uh, do a ripping the rat cooking show. You know, I I love to talk. I I got a lot of things that we can talk about. I talk about um yeah. Fridays, guys. You, you don't have to I, you don't have to wait until our Tuesday shows to send us questions. Right. And where can they send those questions, Tim? They can, Brian, that's a great segue. You can that send those good. questions to Podcast at gmail.com. Ripping the Rack Podcast on Facebook. Ripping the Rack Podcast on Twitter. And if you really, really want to just reach out to Brian and I, and you know us, send us a message anyway on Facebook. If you know Twitter, our email address, what is it? Snapchat. Email. Snapchat. Emails, it doesn't matter. Send us. And if it's not related to Candleton Bowling and you have questions about our thoughts on any other sport out there, camel racing, ant destruction, I don't care. Video Send games, it. wrestling, Video games, movies, wrestling, movies, comedy, TV. Yeah. comedians, TV. Send all that stuff. And listen to us on Spotify, Radio, uh, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Anchor, Breaker, YouTube, and Google Podcasts and other podcasting platforms. Yes. Guys, thank you. Have a great week. Again, don't forget us. Friday morning, 7 a.m. It is on. This show will be on Tuesday mornings. Reach out. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Be safe, everybody. Have fun. See you Friday.